<laughs> All right, we're back for another episode of I'm in a Car, and I have the honor of having Dave Jorski, Mayor of Waterloo, with us today. So thank you for doing this. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, we were just talking before we got in the car about a couple of different things, um, and we're going to get into the kind of initiatives that you've been sure. kind of steering as your time as mayor here. Uh, but in true I'm in a Car fashion, we always start with a bit of a intro and summary so maybe Absolutely. you can give our audience a quick little rundown of how the heck you ended up in the position of mayor of waterloo well that's a good question you know my if i go to do a quick background i was actually born and raised in delhi ontario tobacco farming area and uh worked on a farm through all my high school years and uh learned to get up five o'clock every day so that sort work, of uh, work ethic yeah well it leads into uh things you know you work hard when the work's done you're you're done right but you work until uh, the day is done right? yeah okay so, then after that, uh, in high school, I did a um, aptitude test, and it said the three things I'd be great at would be a watch repairman, a sewing machine repair person, or a uh, accountant. So I thought, well, I better look at what the accountant does. I'm not sure about the other two. And uh, then I realized, wow, I'm good at math, but this accounting stuff doesn't sound like it's for me. Yeah. So my my high school at the time got in the first ever Radio Shack computers. Really. And I thought, hmm, these are good, kind of good at this, Some might seem to have legs, maybe there's a job for this, I'll study at the University of Waterloo, and co-op sounds good, because I like working on farms, so if I do a little school, do a little work, uh, that'll be a good thing. Yeah, okay. And I came here and uh, never left. So when you came to Waterloo, what did you start doing then when you came to Waterloo? So uh, studied math, computer science at Waterloo, I yeah. might be the only... Uh, mayor in North America or the world who has a math computer science degree, but here I am, uh, you know, and uh, did all co-op terms at uh, IBM along with a bunch of friends, including a friend who subsequently became my wife, Jan. Amazing. So we got married in uh, 89 and have been, like I said, here ever since. Cool. Yeah. And then, so what was the kind of path leading up to mayor of Waterloo? Well, that one's interesting. So at uh, first I was working at uh, different software companies and in the 90s I was driving back and forth to Toronto three days a week still from Waterloo. Right. And the traffic wasn't bad as th bad then as it is now. Sure, but, uh, well, now it's ridiculous. And now it's ridiculous and that's why it's good I'm mayor. I can lobby to help make it better and get the all-day two-way go and the, yeah, the okay. high-speed rail that Cam Guthrie wants as well and yeah. Mayor, uh, mayor Barry Vrbanovich. So, um, then I, uh, I was saying I can't keep driving to Toronto and there's a little company, a little startup here that had about 400 people, one of the biggest ones around, and they had just launched this thing called a Blackberry. And I thought, well, you know, I'm good at technical sales, I'm good at technology, um, I think I'm going to try and join this place called Blackberry, or RIM, Research in Motion, that just launched this thing called Blackberry. Right. So I was there for 12 years and during that time, uh, founded a group that became the Global Corporate Social Responsibility Group. So community relations, yeah. philanthropy, um, university relations, government relations, uh, environment and sustainability, and accessibility. Yeah, okay, and cool. so all those things, uh, particularly the volunteerism that you and I were just chatting about on, you know, as we got into the car, I was on the board of the Chamber of Commerce, the Community Foundation, the um, Communitech, the High Tech Association here, a yeah. number of different uh, uh, groups, including Waddle Minor Hockey, Waddle Minor Soccer, yeah. helped with my boys. So. And you worked and you slept at some point? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true, right? You know, with the uh, kids and stuff like that, you know it, right? You know, it's a it's a busy life. and um, But with volunteerism, everything goes quicker and you're making all these different contacts and all this different fun. So when uh, eventually my time came to an end at, at, at RIM, at Blackberry, um, people said, you know what, you know this community so well, and you have business experience, and you have government, uh, you've government, you worked with government before, why don't you, um, why don't you uh, try running for mayor? And so, yeah, I said, why, not? Oh, why not? So I tried it, and uh, you know, that became a goal, and, then, and lo and behold, here I am riding in a car. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. That's cool. Three years later. Well, and it's really interesting you say that uh, you know, there probably isn't any other mayors in Canada that have a uh, master's with math or computer science. Oh, I don't have a master's, just a bachelor. Oh, that was enough Sorry, degree. Yeah, degree. degree yeah. Um, and then, like, how fitting is that, though, to be in, in Waterloo? Uh, what would be, you know, a lot of people, um, that's the tech hub of Canada. Yeah, and, yes. And part of the main part of the tech corridor that exists. So, uh, when I travel all over the place, and people ask me where I'm from, and I'm, I live in Fergus, so no one knows yes. where that is. Yep. So then, sometimes I'll take a stab at Guelph. Uh, most likely everybody knows Toronto, but 
when I say Waterloo, people know about Waterloo. It's interesting. I heard a story from a, a friend. They were in Nepal and they were climbing to the top of a mountain, and they're with another group that was from China. And some of the people spoke English, and they started talking about um, you know where they're from. We're from Canada and stuff like that. Oh, where in Canada? Oh, they never heard of it. It's uh, by Toronto. It's a place called Waterloo. And the people from China said, "Oh, our kids go to Waterloo." <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, so anyway, it's a, it is a small world when it really comes down to it. So you know we. You know, both Guelph and uh, and Waterloo Region can really be thankful for the uh, educational institutions that we have yeah, because, because they're inventing the future. They're are what keeping our communities young. They're generating the startups and new knowledge, and uh, that's what's going to make uh, all the com all, all the uh, communities in our region uh, that uh, prosperous. Yeah, we're pretty lucky if you think about the density of post secondary education that exists within. Well, I, you know, like 50 kilometers. You, you know, it used to be um, Waterloo was known as the, the Hartford of uh, Canada because we had so many insurance companies like Hartford and uh, the U.S. does. Yeah, okay. And that, so the insurance capital of Canada. Then we were the home of the Blackberry. And so people were looking for a void of, okay, now what do we call it? So I was walking around. We do a lot of walking and trying to see, you know, walking, walking and thinking. And, you know, our key assets here are our two universities and colleges. You pluck those out, we're a radically different town. Yeah, we're probably a town. Yeah. So uh, that's something that's very important, and uh, I, I think that's why I like calling us Canada's Education City because we have 40,000 students in the city of Waterloo and uh, post secondary, and a population base of about 130,000. So yeah, like, one, <laughs> one in every four people is a, that's a, a, a post secondary student. So, when um, this, this idea of the tech corridor, Yes. Can you give us a quick rundown of kind of what that is from your perspective and kind of what's coming up in the next couple of years and how it's developing? Well, it sort of uh, has its base as the uh, connectivity to Toronto. So it was first about how do we get to Toronto, like we were talking about the 401, bit of a gong show every day. Yeah. Um, we need uh, all day two-way go, we need high-speed rail, we need to improve what we have. And so that's something that's near and dear to all the mayors along the corridor's heart. But it became beyond that, like why do we care? And it's because it's an economic development realm, the whole corridor. Um, other places, you're going to be um, hopping on the GO train, you're commuting, 9 to 5. The, the GO train's busy at 9 o'clock, the GO train's busy at 5 o'clock. In our case, we don't really have that. We want to go there and go back. We want to go to uh, Mars at the University of Toronto. We want to go to the University of Toronto. We want to go to Bay Street. We want to come back. Right. And that applies to all of us along the corridor. So this is an economic development line. And that's why we need to do so much improvement. So that's where really Toronto Waterloo Region Corridor came about. Is we're not, you know, 100,000 uh, population Guelph and 100,000 population Waterloo and a million population Toronto or whatever. Um, altogether, we're about seven million people. We have over 200,000 post-secondary uh, uh, students. We, we're a powerhouse to the world, right. and that's it's only through that together um, that we can really compete. You know, Silicon Valley. There's no place called Silicon Valley. Right, yeah, it's not a destination. No, it's not. A, it's, a, it's a collective. And that's yeah. really what we are, is a collective, a force against the world, and we want the world to come here, which is why we made the Amazon shortlist. It's because we all said we need to cooperate, and uh, luckily we're the only Canadian uh, uh, area uh, in the Amazon shortlist, and it's because of our cooperation. That's cool. So you take that idea of cooperation and, and the collective, mm -hmm. and then kind of bring it into your everyday, um, you know, leadership at a municipal level, you know, from my perspective, is something that I just shudder at. I can, I can, I'm not sure if I can oh. take it on. I, like, I don't know, because I'm just the, uh, the pace of it versus the private sector. And but I mean, there's also some really cool upsides. So I'm just curious, what, what kind of approaches do you take from a leadership standpoint? And is that kind of uh, collective mindset, that group idea, is that part of your everyday leadership style? Well, it's it's trying to uh, it's trying to do it all, and the only way you can do it all. Uh, uh, let's, let's roll back. People, when they think of the city of whatever, the one person they can name is the mayor, right? right? So, like, everything accrues to the mayor and everything the mayor's, it's the mayor's fault, right? So uh, Yeah, when things go well, whoever did it, did it well. When things don't go well, it's the mayor's fault. Yes, so uh, <laughs> we, we hear a lot from people uh, as mayors, and, uh, you know, people have expectations, and that's why, you know, you'll find that mayors, mayors don't have a lot of staff. Maybe in big cities they do. Here it's sort of... Uh, like it's myself and one person, right, who help right. out on everything. And it's about getting many hands to do the work. So let's go back to volunteerism. Uh, a city or a region or can't pick up everything. Like, right. you know, there's lots of issues in our community. 
what we need to do is work through our volunteer organizations, our charities and things like that, our churches to help get things done. Uh, which is why I know um, the mayor's around here and that, and I know Cam's very busy. Uh, I think I go to 400 or 500 events a year. And that's really to thank the volunteers for the work that they're doing right. because it's so important. Because it was up to the municipality to do it, it couldn't be done, we couldn't afford it. Um, it, we're just so thankful for our volunteer organizations in our communities and that's why whenever they're having award ceremonies or things like that we we try and make it out we, we receive probably twice as many invitations but you know we do what we can well sure i was gonna say that's a pretty high yeah. pace and then that's that's just to that's just the um keeping things going aspect right you know answering the emails uh, going to uh, volunteer events and that that's what keeps things going but then you have to have the aspirational things the things you want to do beyond that to make this community better and that's uh, some of the things we just focus on yeah that's cool so just um, well the, on that point and then I'll come back to another question yeah. so what are some of the key kind of aspirations you have that you want to you know bring into the community so um, I've kind of found out that uh, as mayor um, I can't really change you but I can change your kids. So I do a lot of work with uh, grade five youth, grade seven youth, in terms of uh, you know inspiring them to, to, to get involved in their community. So I have a grade five council for a day contest that's on right now, and any grade five can say, what's their one idea for Waterloo? And then at my state of a city address, I announce the eight winners, one mayor and, and seven councillors. Yeah. And we spend the entire day together, either at the, the fire hall, at the arenas, we play pickleball together, we sometimes awesome. are on the radio or on TV. At the end of the day, we have a council meeting. And then we start at 7 a.m. And last year, I still remember, it was 5 p.m. So now it's like 10 hours later. Yeah. And I say, okay, now we need a motion to adjourn. And they say, what's a motion to adjourn? I said, this is where we all say it's time to go home. And they go, we don't want to go home. <laughs> that was after 10 hours. Their parents are waiting, things like that. And I'm yeah. like, wow, that's how much children are sponges for knowledge, sponges for information. And uh, we can do well, all of us, to, to reach out to our children. So second, uh, I now want to stratify that. So I want to have a grade seven event. And if you look at grade seven, what really happens along the way, as you know, I have a math degree. Um, but what uh, back then, there was probably, probably only about 10% female. So right. gender equity is way off on that one. And as you know, that's a, that's a key topic right now. So I look in the mirror in, in the morning, I say, what can I do about that? And I thought, uh, along with my wife, who also has a math degree, that what if we were to take grade seven girls we have somewhat of an interest in math, yeah. and really solidify that. So put them together with um, uh, STEAM, so science, technology, engineering, arts, design, and math, professionals, uh, CEOs and that, but 100% who are female, and combine the two and see what happens. We spend half a day together. Yeah, cool. Well, you know, and it's really taking like the, uh, the thoughts of chamber networking events and uh, uh, students, so two different cohorts, and put them together and see what happens. Well, after half a day, I couldn't get them to go home either. They were having such a great time, and they were wondering how they could get in, in contact with each other afterwards. I lost that to them. Right. But really, I picked um, a handful of students from every school. So now, these, these girls, they, they came to the event. They go back to their schools now as science and math ambassadors, with my goal to get these girls and others to just simply register for grade nine science and math, the, uh, the academic level, yep. to keep options open. And that's my whole goal. It wasn't about careers or anything like that. It's just to say, wow, there is a lot of things that are open in the areas of science and math, and uh, let's see what we can do. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so then in, all, in, in this past, and I really appreciate, so the name of the program is? Grade seven girls in STEAM. Okay, cool. And where can people get info on that? Oh, it's probably online. There was a few articles done about it. It was a pilot program, yeah, and okay. uh, our intent is to hold it once a year. We're going to make lots of changes for uh, the next iteration of it, and we may even pull off a Waterloo version one, uh, one more this year. Okay, awesome. Yeah, but it's something that we intend that it could be packaged up so that any mayor or anybody, again, who has a, a post-secondary institution, they can partner with them. And as long as you have kids in grade 7, and as long as you have interested uh, people who can volunteer, and as we were talking about, if you ask people, they will they will volunteer, right? So you just ask them. Yeah. I was hoping to get 20, and I had to stop it at 65 female role models. <laughs> they just wouldn't stop. They go, I want, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I, I want to spend a half a day of my free time with these girls who I don't know. I that's said, amazing. Wonderful for me. Um, that's a really cool program. And that's what, that really is community building, but again, um, 
in an economical format that uh, municipalities and everyone can afford. Yeah, that's really interesting too. And then it also, you know, not as only are you planting seeds for long-term sustainability, you're also engaging the people that are in the community making the impact yeah. today in terms of the professionals. So it's, it's like a win, 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 win. Like there's just yes. no downside to that type of approach. Absolutely. And that's, um, you know, these, these, you know, these, these girls who are now 13, they're going to be 14, 15, 16, you know, having raised kids, I know at that age, they kind of stop listening to their parents, right? You know, <laughs> kind of. Kind of stop listening to their parents. I don't know how old yours are, but, uh, you know. They're not even close. Okay. okay. 3 one, one. Okay, so they're, they they will stop listening to, to you in about 12 years, as sad as that sounds. They'll start yeah, listening yeah. to you again in about 30, but anyway. <laughs> um, so here's here's the, uh, the advantage of this. I now have 65 female role models, and we had a networking event, so they had to try and meet each other and we could win a pizza contest. Uh, yeah, okay. two, two of the girls actually met 52 of the 65 uh, women that day wow. and had conversations with them. So, you know, they'll be inspired, they'll be connected, and uh, we made a brochure so that they could feel free to reach out over the internet if their parents are okay with that. We yeah. ask that to the parents. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. So then in your, in your path of leadership throughout your career, um, what, what kind of lessons have you learned that you kind of apply that really kind of help you move the needle when you have an idea that you want to make some change? Uh, what kind of approach do you take? Uh, almost like the Tom Sawyer approach to get everybody, you know, saying, hey, this is fun. But not being like Tom Sawyer where you leave them hanging. It's like getting involved, bringing an idea to people. And this Girls in Steam event, uh, although there was, it was sort of like our idea, um, there were two key people, Adele and Nicole, who really helped out to make this happen. And there were probably about 150 other people who said, well, the female role model, 65. I had volunteers doing games and things like that there, organizers. Uh, there could have been 175 people involved now that I think wow. about it. I, you know, it just, it's that kind of um, power of ideas is so key, sharing those ideas and uh, just drumming up the enthusiasm for them. So that's, yeah, those are, that's two cool ideas right there that you just mentioned. One of them is the power of ideas and, and then sh and sharing them and then, and then drumming up, you know, participation and interest. So when you talk about sharing ideas um, in a lot of, you know, not only things I've read and watched and whatever, but also experiences, um, I've found I've made a whole bunch of fatal mistakes fatal mistakes or I've had flaws in the way I share because I'm either not sharing enough well, in terms do. of frequency oh. or I'm not sharing enough in terms of like context and why and stuff like that. So what kind of things do you do when you go to share an idea? Well, be before you give me too many accolades, let's just say as mayor, I often find out when I don't share enough. Sure. <laughs> I certainly hear from people often that I, hey, are you weren't sharing that idea. And that is true. That's completely true. You get just get busy and you don't share enough and people lose track of what you've done. But um, I, I think that's just something to, to keep in mind. What was your question again? So the idea was when you go, when you have an idea that you want to share with people, mm -hmm. What do you do to share it? Like, how do you do it? How often oh, do you do it? Like, start starting in person. In person is key. That's um, something I, I'm a big believer in. Is the networking aspect for my chamber of commerce and community tech background. Right. Um, after that, ideas can be shared. You know, um, you know, over email and things like that. But I'm really, really caught on the, the power of um, the power of the in person meeting, and then finally the uh, the communication that well beyond something things that are well written, well communicated, and uh, can get out there. It can be anything on social media. I'm really struggling with all the different social medias that there are now. <laughs> not, Instagram, not just me. <laughs> like Instagram stories now. Um, I'm trying to think what else they do. Well, certainly LinkedIn, uh, uh, Facebook again. Twitter is more newsy now, so I put more newsy stuff there. Yeah. But uh, it's communicating through all these methods that. Um, cause people to say, hey, I heard about this on whatever. I heard about this from a friend. Uh, how can I get involved? I said, come on in. Yeah, let's do Lots this. Of room. Big, so big tent policy. I, I hear a lot. That's cool. Yeah. Come on in. Big tent. Yeah, Everybody's yeah, welcome. Yeah. So th this idea, though, of around taking the time for the one-on-one -on -one meeting to initiate some ideas with some yeah. key people. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that I've met with, talked to, even my own experiences, where sometimes you don't have the time mm -hmm. to go meet with all these people to share an idea to get something kicked off. So... What is it about the one-on-one -on -one meeting that is so significant from your perspective so that you make the time to do it? I mean, you're doing 400 events a year. How do you find time to do that kind of stuff? Okay, the thing about a good idea, a good idea is what you start with. It's by getting input from other people that becomes a great idea. So without the input from the other people, it doesn't become a great idea, right? So um, it's so key to do that because my idea, well, I'll, okay, I'll tell you the story from a year and a half ago. Awesome. I love math. 
Do you? Sure. No, you don't. <laughs> So my first idea was to have a community-wide... <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Uh, my first idea was to have a community-wide math contest. Right. That's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we morphed that into, okay, let's forget about this math contest idea. and Because uh, those already exist. University of Waterloo has those kinds of things as well. And I did them even when I was a kid. But it was going to have a bit of a different flavor. But still not a lot of... It need more fun built into it. It okay. look, need to look like fun. And so that's where the idea came to, let's spend a half a day with these girls let's borrow ideas from community tech chamber of commerce let's network let's get these um the power of the the female role models in there and uh almost step out of the way we'll facilitate it but let's see what happens yeah and uh but that only came about through working around with friends buzzing this idea was 18 months in the uh in the making and most significantly over the past nine months yeah okay so it comes out in one day and everybody goes oh that was really good yeah it was 18 months but um thanks to adele and nicole and other, many other people toby who helped out but uh, well and the beauty of that though is it started with this math contest yeah it was a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> so even a good idea and see what didn't even start out as a good idea it came out as an idea and it was through morphing that it became a good idea and a great idea. That's cool. And became so successful, like I said, people wouldn't leave. That's awesome. I, you know, I find, for myself anyway, I struggle with understanding when to facilitate and when to direct. Ah, uh, okay. And so I just, yeah. do you have any take on that? Yeah, well, it's a little bit different as mayor versus being in business. So a lot of things in business is about... Uh, uh, building enthusiasm in that so you're doing a lot of the facilitating and a lot of helping out and a lot of uh, getting involved um, and, and this is from an employee standpoint I try not to direct I try to let the employee self-discover that this is important we can really make a difference here so that the person owns it they can be successful from it I can thank them for it but without directing so could you give us one little tip on how you go about doing that? Because that's pretty awesome. Well, I think, um, boy, I did this in business too. It's just, um, and sometimes again, like my idea for the math contest. Okay, it's an interesting idea, but it's bad. And they, my, my staff at, at Research in Motion Blackberry would tell me that, right? So <laughs> they say, here's what we need to do. I go, I don't think that's a good idea. They said, who's responsible here? You or me? I go, you. I go, can you do it my way? I said, sure, whatever. Yep. Bounce, bounce ideas off me. I then become the uh, the server of, um, of bouncing ideas off of rather than the director. Right, 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 right. And they would do it, and invariably they would be successful because, again, you know, I'm not getting any younger, and generational differentialities matter, right? So um, it's it's key to have that generation working with them. Again, with my Girls in STEAM event, there are a lot of um, women in their 20s who participated because they're only 10 years older than these students yeah, okay. versus people my age who's like grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, well, you know, one of the interesting things though, I think you just uh, touched on right there um, was this idea of, you know, when somebody bounces an idea off somebody and, and then, you know, hey, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. And then they say, well, do you know who's, like, who's responsible for this? Well, you are. That idea of understanding who's responsible for what can probably create a lot of clarity when trying to figure out and, and, what's going to happen. And ownership. Right, it's ownership. So it became instead of me directing somebody, they do it, and then it's successful for for both of us, or, or they executed my idea. Let them execute their own idea, and then it's success for them. Because the reality is, you need them to be successful because they're the ones who, um, you know, the, the success builds around a great leader. That's cool. a great leader doesn't have to be the successful one. There's all the success around him or her. And uh, you begin to see it, and you go, wait a minute, just being around there, that's, um, there's good things happening around this person. That's cool. Yeah. So uh, if you could go back mm -hmm. and tell yourself something that you wish you knew way back when that you know now, what would be your words of wisdom to yourself? Buy Google stock. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of that, I think the the one thing I continue to work on, and uh, it was actually through my grade five students, they came up with the idea of a water exercise day a few years ago. So I did exercise. I was playing dodgeball. I did Zumba with our seniors. I did stuff like that. So building the uh, the aspect of health right into your life is not something that uh, that that I've typically done so right. that I wish I wished I would have been built into my life beforehand it, it, it hasn't I try and get on the treadmill and do stuff whenever I can but um, you know that's one thing that you know as mayor I can still build enthusiasm for an active Waterloo lifestyle um, 
I need to get into it myself and that's something that uh, I look forward to changing in my own life today and wish I heard about that for myself uh, 20, 30 years ago. Cool, man. Good? Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Yeah, Wonderful. Okay.